This is an easy way to make a high contrast black and white conversion in Photoshop. All right, so once your image is open, obviously the first thing we're gonna do is turn your image black and white. And the method we're gonna use is with a gradient map adjustment layer. So just go down to this little half circle thing, click on it and go to gradient map. It's gonna do this funky thing to your image. Just go up here where there's this gradient and click on it. If you don't see it under properties, just go to window and then down to properties right here. So then just click on this gradient, which is gonna open up the gradient editor go into basics, this little drop down, and click this first one that goes from black to white. Click on it, and that's gonna immediately create a very high contrast black and white image. If you don't have this one, then just click on any one. So I'm just gonna click on this one, for example, and then just click here, click here, slide to black, click OK. Then over here, click here, click here, and slide to white, click OK. Now, since we're creating a high contrast black and white conversion, I would also suggest sliding these two boxes in to whatever degree you think makes sense. So I'm gonna slide mine in. You can see this is brightening up my brights. So I'm gonna go to about there, and then this one will darken my darks. You can make it even more contrasty if you want. And then this thing right here, adjust your midtones. So going this way will darken your midtones, this way will brighten them. So I'm gonna keep that right in the middle for me and then I'm just gonna click OK. Next, we're gonna add another adjustment layer. So click back on your main image, go down to the little half circle thing, and click on black and white this time. Even though our image is already black and white, this just allows us to adjust the tones of the image based on the colors of the original image. But we're actually gonna click on Auto to start, not the default one, so click on Auto. And then you're just gonna play around with these sliders until you get kind of the look that you want. Just be careful if you slide anything too much, so I'm gonna show you with cyan's here, just look in her shirt right down here. You can see as I crank cyan's, it, you know, the image can kind of fall apart if you go too far one way or the other. So I would suggest before you slide anything, just remember what the original number is. So for blues, it's 20. So if I slide and you start going, oh, none of that looks good, then just go back to 20 and you should be good. And just so you know, you can use this hand thing right here too. So if you click on it, it allows you to click on part of the image. So if I click here, you can see that that activates the reds. And if I slide to the right or left, that allows me to control the brightness of that tone of that range of color within the image. So you can do it that way as well. But if you find yourself wanting more control over just a part of the image, like let's say her lips, my suggestion would be to hide those two, go back to the main background image, click on the little half circle thing, and this time add hue saturation. And then with this hand, click on it, click on the thing that you want to adjust, the color that you want to adjust. So I clicked on the lips. You can see it activated this little range of color right here. And now what happens if I slide the hue, just so we can really see what it's doing, you can see that it's changing red to blue, but I'm just doing this so I can really see what it's affecting. So I'm actually gonna close the range down a little bit. So slide these in, then I'm gonna click in the middle and just slide around until I'm really just getting the lips or you know mostly just the lips. You can even slide these in to be closer, You know, do whatever you gotta do to kinda hone in on just the lips. So I'm gonna maybe slide this over. So that looks pretty good for me right there. I'm gonna slide this back to the middle because we're not actually adjusting the hue, we're actually adjusting the lightness now. But before we can see what it's actually doing to our image, we need to reactivate black and white and gradient map. So now when we slide lightness to the left, you can see that it's darkening the lips, and when you slide it to the right, it's brightening them. So this is a really good way to control a specific color and area of your image based on what you have right here. Just take note that Right now it's activated on reds because that's what we picked. So if you click somewhere else and then you try and go back by clicking on the little icon to actually edit, it's gonna go back to master. So make sure to click in here and switch it back to the color that you had. For me, it was reds. So I'm gonna go to about, let's say 24 or so right there. I think that looks pretty good. Just be aware that if I click this eyeball, it's also impacting other parts of your image that are contained within this reds range of color here. So if you want that, if it looks good to you, then just leave it. If not, if you just want it to impact the lips, like the area that you were trying to control, then click on your mask, go Command or Control I to invert it to be a black mask. 
then go to your brush. Make sure it's a white brush, so click here and go to white if you need to. Click OK. Go up to the size here and make it so it's appropriate to paint on the area that you want. So for me, a little bit smaller so I can get into the lips. And then for hardness, make sure you drop it way down and you can have opacity and flow at 100. So I'm going to zoom in here and then just paint over the area. Now that's not dark enough for me to see, so I'm going to go back in here, switch it to reds and really darken it so that now when I'm on the mask and I paint, I can really see what is changing. So once you have the area that you want affected painted, then maybe go back in and, you know, I'm going to slide it back to I had it about 24 or so. So that'll look pretty good. Now if I zoom out and click the eyeball, you can see that it's only impacting the lips now, not the rest of that stuff because where this white is, that's where the lips are. And that's the only part that's being affected now. Anything in black is not being affected anymore. All right, next we're going to identify any areas that we want to enhance or stand out in terms of brightness. So in my case, it's really just the eyes that I probably want to stand out a little bit more. So now go to your very top one, go back to the gradient map, go back to your adjustment layers, and this time pick curves. And really all we have to do is click near the middle and drag it up to kind of brighten. Just ignore everything else but how the eyes are looking. So I kind of like that. You can even go a little bit extra if you want because we can tone it back with opacity later. I might even click up here now and, you know, bump that just a little bit to add a little more contrast within that eye. So this one kind of went up a little bit and then I bump this one just a little bit more. And then again, we're going to click on it, go Commander Control I to invert it. Go back to our brush that's white and similar thing, hardness way down and size that's appropriate. And then just paint in the area that you want to stand out. So you can see that makes the eyes pop out. The only thing you might have to do is then flick this back to black to paint around the outside, like around the eyelids and kind of the under eye areas, because you might not want them to stand out in the same way that the actual eyeball does. Okay, so if I now click this eyeball right here, you can see that was before and this is after. But I would always suggest zooming out before you make the kind of final call on how you think the eyes look. So now I'm going to click away and click back. So that's maybe a little bit too strong. So again, I can just go to opacity and slide it down until I get the level that I like. So somewhere around 60, 65% looks pretty good to me. Okay, so at this point, we need to actually combine everything that we've done so far. So just click on your top layer, then just hold Control, Shift, Alt, E. That'll make one image of everything we've done so far. Then just right click, go up to Convert to Smart Object, and then have to Filter and down to Camera Raw Filter. Now, everything we're going to do in here is under Basic, so just drop that down. And everything that I do in here is not necessarily everything that you're going to do. So you got to make your own call on if you like what I've done and then make adjustments based on what you want your final result to be. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to drop my highlights. I'm going to bump my whites. Then I'm going to bump my clarity. And this one, you got to be careful. Don't go too crazy. But you want to bump it because it's supposed to be a high contrast image. So. I tend to go a little bit more than I need to, so I'm going to go about about 50 right here. I'm going to put a little bit of texture, a little bit of dehaze, and then really in here, you just have to decide between contrast and shadows, like the blacks here, you have to decide how contrasty or crushed you want your blacks. So obviously you can crank the contrast to make it really high contrast, but then you're going to lose a lot of the detail in here, so you got to decide there. You can drop it back to bring some details back in. I'm going to bump mine just a little bit. And then same thing for kind of shadows and blacks. So you got to just play around to see what you want and then call it a day. Click OK. So now that was before camera raw filter and this is after. So you can see it really enhances a lot of the contrast within the image. And again, you can drop the opacity. If you think that's too strong, you can peel it back and get rid of some of it if you want. I'm going to leave it full up for mine. And that actually brings us to our final step, which is to go back to our adjustment layers and add a levels. And within here, all you're doing is paying attention to everything that is not your main subject. So I'm going to start with my midtones. I'm going to slide them to the right because I kind of want to get rid of 
how much these kind of plants are popping out from what it was before. So if I go back to the middle, you can see that the plants are kind of fighting for attention with our main subject. So I'm going to drag this over to the right to darken the midtones, and that kind of draws our attention away from the plants. I'm not going to darken my darks. They're already dark enough. I'm not going to brighten my brights because I'm going to deal with that on the mask afterwards. The only other thing I'm going to do kind of to deal with the plants as well is this. This will darken my brights if I drag this over. So this kind of softens up some of these like streaks in the plants. I can kind of darken some of those up and draw our attention away from those as well. Okay, so once you get your background, like the stuff that you don't want us to be focusing on, looking how you want, a little bit darker, then just click back on your mask right here on the white. We're going to go back to the brush. This time, instead of a white brush, we're going to use a black brush, and we're going to make sure the brush size is bigger and the hardness is at 100%. So your size, for me, it's going to be somewhere in the 2000s. I want it to be, you know, kind of the same size as my subject. And then all you're going to do is click once to kind of dab and you're going to make a circle. So if you see on the mask here, there's just a solid black circle. Then all we have to do is go command or control T, right click in there and go to distort and then just size this circle, change it into like an oval that covers your subject. So I'm going to go to about like that. That covers everything that I want. I might even slide this up. I don't need everything down there. Once you're good, click check. Then just go over to your properties over here. Again, if you don't see it, go to window and then down to properties. And we're just going to slide the feather over probably around four or 500% somewhere in there to kind of soften up the transition. Now, when I click the eyeball, that was what it was before. And that's what it is now with this levels adjustment. Everything that's in black here is not being affected. And then it slowly transitions out to the white, which is everything we just affected with those levels adjustments. The only problem with that for mine is this leaf that's in the foreground here because it's included in this kind of black, which means it's not being affected by levels anymore. And I want it to be affected in, in the same way as the other plants that are around. So if you have a situation like that, all you have to do is flick back over to white and probably adjust your brush size. Don't adjust the hardness, keep it at 100 because we've already feathered it out. So drop your brush size to something appropriate. So mine, that looks pretty good. And then just with the white brush, paint that section in. So I'm just painting it in white. You're not going to see much right now as I'm doing it. And you're going to see that that kind of took away part of this black here, which means it's now being affected by the levels and vice versa. If there's something that you want to be affected still, then just flick back to black and paint over that section with the black. And then now it won't be affected anymore by the levels. So you can see I kind of painted that section out right there in black. For mine, I don't want that, so I'm going to undo that. Now at this point, since we're pretty much done, all you have to do is go between levels. So if you need to adjust anything on this one, just click on the little icon over here and you can play around with your adjustments. That'll only deal with the background now, so you can slide those around. Or if you need to adjust your main image, just double click on camera raw filter. It'll bring you back into the filter where you can make other adjustments. So if you need to change your clarity, you know, do whatever for your shadows, adjust whatever you need, click OK, and it'll adjust back onto your main image here. And that's it. You're done. For other creative ways to do black and white conversions, make sure to check out one of the videos on the screen right now.